Very warm welcome to our post-game show here on CBS Sports Network and Paramount Plus. Kate Abdo, Thierry Henry, Jamie Carragher, Micah Richards. Uh, Liverpool have made it through to their third Champions League final in five seasons. Congratulations, <coughs> Jamie Carragher. Great moment for you and your team. Uh, we'll talk to you more about that in just a second. We're going to take you straight over to Madrid where we had Jules Breach and, and Guillaume Balague watching for us. Um, you guys were in for, it was a roller coaster of a game and it was, as they say in football, quite literally a, a game of two halves, guys. It was. You know what? what? What a game. We've just witnessed another sensational Champions League semi-final, Guillaume. That first half was everything the neutral and the Villarreal fans were hoping for. They made it a real game for Liverpool. But the second half, I mean, the Reds were just devastating. Yeah, first half, uh, the centre-backs of Villarreal were brilliant. The midfielders were brilliant. With the ball and without the ball, the attackers were attacking. Gerard Moreno didn't last long. I think after half an hour, really, he wasn't at his best. And in the second half, with uh, Luis Diaz coming on, what you could see really was a team in Liverpool that I think you've been thrown a, a flag. <laughs> we keep getting Gracias. flags and scarves thrown at us because I tell you what, the Villarreal fans, despite the result yeah. tonight, despite they've gone out after putting up such a fight, the fans in this stadium have loved every single minute of it, haven't yes, they? Yes, and we, would, yeah. we just witnessed the team that lost, the, the ones that did not qualify for the final, being clapped and ovation by everyone. is a special day. This, uh, as Unai Emery asked everybody to do, basically everybody should know in the world that they are a good team, that it wasn't the one that uh, we saw in the first leg. And I think everybody showed the quality. It's just that they're facing the best team in the world in the best form of, uh, of the season. They put one, two gears up, and you could see, couldn't it? They just... The 50-50s were won by Liverpool. They started to run in behind. There were mistakes, and there was Rolly. The biggest difference, really, yeah. The biggest difference, really, in that second half was that the intensity from Villarreal just came down a couple of paces, didn't it? Why do you think that was? Well, Luis Diaz comes on and starts running in behind. All of a sudden, you see not just him, but uh, Mane and Salah getting on the edge of the box, and the midfielders pushing on as well. So are the centre backs. Villarreal thinks, OK, there's a hundred games in every game. This one is the one where we suffer and defending our own box. Yeah. But then they concede a goal that is... They're going to have to do their homework and obviously try to find another goalkeeper, basically, because Rulli just uh, should have stopped that first goal. You could see the dynamic had changed, but in any case, it didn't help. He didn't help with a third goal either coming out of his box. But by then, the team was defending so badly. You could see that Liverpool is a top team and they waited for the moment and the moment arrived. OK, well, we are going to try and catch up with Unai Emery to find out why things changed in that second half. We'll try and talk to Jurgen Klopp as well, see how he feels to reach a third Champions League final in five seasons with Liverpool. And we'll try and talk to some of the players as well. By the way, Jamie, I'll bring this home for you, shall I? <laughs> well, where's the bus, Jules? Where's the yellow bus? What happened to that second half? <laughs> It's taken off. It's going to the next stop. I actually don't know where it is. <laughs> where did we put it? I've lost it. They parked it at Someone's Anfield in the it. first leg. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they did. Yeah. <sighs> All right, good stuff, guys. Uh, thank you very much. So, um, let's talk about this one. Uh, Terry, I've not really heard much of your thoughts from it so far. Uh, your opinion on Liverpool's performance? I, I mean, Jimmy said it before. When you play away from home in Europe, Villarreal are where in the semi-final for a reason. It's going to be difficult. They made it a tie. I didn't think they were going to play that well and as well as they did in the first half. But the problem is, can you maintain the pressure? Can you maintain the intensity? And it is tough to maintain that intensity and that pressure against Liverpool. And then after, quality matters. We all called for Luis Diaz to come on and because he has that ability and capacity to to dribble past players. He started to run in behind, Mo Salah, Mane, suddenly they're not coming out of their box. Gerard Moreno also not being there in the second half um, was a little problem, but they accepted to defend their box. And when you defend your box against Liverpool like that, it became difficult. Crosses so, were I, coming I in. About yeah. Earlier on the show, we put sort of the five best teams we all mm. thought in the Champions League. Your one was right at the top. That was a team that, so, I think, won six trophies in that season or, yeah. or basically won everything. Yeah. Did you have situations like that on that run or specific games yeah. where you had a situation like Liverpool's? I, I, I would say the obvious one that people will think of, it will be Chelsea. Remember? Yeah. Andres in Iniesta the scored that goal last minute when people were talking about, obviously, was it a penalty? We're not going to go back to all of this. We drew nil at home, 1-1 away. It was tight. But we played away. 
at Lyon. And I'm telling you, if we went back from that game, Lyon away, losing three to four, one, it would have been normal. Mm. But we drew one, one. People don't remember that game. But we drew one, one. I don't know how, but we did. And we brought the game back to, to, to Barcelona, obviously, and we won. We scored four in maybe all three, as if I remember well, in 20 to 25 minutes, anyway, anyhow. But yeah, you go through moments during the season where a team that people don't expect you to suffer against, they, they play well on the night. And by the way, that Lyon team has been at Benzema in it just to, for you to, you know, just in, in case you don't know him, you know. <laughs> but Juninho, Benzema, they had a good team and we suffered. We suffered big time against them. Well, you know what? You might be wondering, what's it like to watch a Champions League semi-final with our resident mean boys, Thierry and, and uh, Micah? Um, well, we can show you, actually, because this is what was happening at our Heineken halftime moment. They were giving Jamie a lot of stick. <laughs> Being respectful. Go for the throat. Oh, it's gonna be. Offside. <laughs> well, I want to give you another unmissable moment, right? Give us my drink, give us my Heineken now. This is a proper unmissable moment. Come here. And we're all having them. Everyone, we are all celebrating Liverpool getting to a Champions League final Do we have for the 10th time. Oh, we're all celebrating this. I don't this drink. This is big news. I don't drink. You, can, hey, I don't drink. you will be in Paris. <laughs> no, I don't drink. I'm having that one. Cheers. I'll, I'll, I'll cheers come with on, you. Come on, come on. Right, let's. Kate, you not have a mono. Come drink. on. I don't drink. I don't drink. Well Come done. On. Congrats. Yeah. I'll have two then. <laughs> All the best. This is a proper unmissable moment. <laughs> You're confirming all of uh, Guillaume's preconceptions about. Oh, okay. Oh, hey, hey. No. whoa. The, whoa, that's not drinking. That's. Uh... Oh, Micah, wow. don't, you don't have to succumb to the peer pressure, you know, Micah. Oh, gosh. Wow. If you're gonna do it, do it got, properly. You know we've got another. How long is this gonna take you, Jamie? What? <laughs> <laughs> what? What's he doing? Yeah, but to be fair, the the, the mouth of Micah is like a tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that I can talk, you know. But. Um. Uh, you're still gonna finish it. <laughs> that was like kissing Jackie Connell. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, oh, Hey! Jackie Connell with a second See you in Paris. <laughs> oh, that well, was the good news one. is we've got another hour of television to do as what, Jamie what, what, starts... What, 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 and, uh, you know, we're going to Paris regardless. I'm a team player. And I said, if care. Manchester City get through, what oh, will get through. Get, I, I thought if they don't... You see how he's scared already? <laughs> oh, if they don't get through. That's it's not easy. Heineken, we're on the champagne. <laughs> if Man City oh, don't get there. On the DP. I've got to watch the other one, haven't I? OK. Um, <laughs> Are we go, are we, where are we going with this, Kate? Are we, you it's a great mind, question, Michael. Mind. I'm trying to figure it out myself. You know what? We're going to go to a very quick break. We'll all compose ourselves. <laughs> hello, hello. Good evening. Welcome back. Uh, one beer down. We are back on air. Um, it took Micah a grand total of 13 seconds. Wow. Jamie Carragher, 35. Oh. It always takes me longer. <laughs> <laughs> Blimey. You support uh, responsible uh, drinking, Kate. Yes, I know, we do. Okay. Um, yes. Maybe this should be like the new arm wrestling. Well, the drinking. Yeah, the drinking. Yeah. Well, listen, I'm in Paris. I'm going to have a good time in Paris. I'll have, I'll have a good drink, good drink with anyone. It's whether this man's with me. I'll be there. To be fair, if you're slurring, people at home might not know the difference in the US anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's take you through the action from this one then, because uh, as we've said a couple of times, the game of two halves, Villarreal taking the lead uh, very early on in this game. Thierry? 
They did, they surprised us all, but to be fair, they started well and, and they deserved it. Espitunian, Estupinian, sorry, crossed the ball. Capu went ahead of Robertson that was slipping a bit. Also, Van Dijk has a tendency sometimes when the ball passes him to, to, to just switch off a bit, but Bulaidia didn't. Estupinian put the cross in, Capu, and then Bulaidia, 1-0. Yeah, I mean, listen, before the game, not just Villarreal, but any team in that situation, it's all about getting that early goal. It completely transforms the, the game, the mentality of the opposition. Also, you see the scenes in the crowd. That would, that's what they'd have spoken about, I'm sure, the supporters and the players before the game, wouldn't it? Getting that early goal and just changing the dynamic of the game. That's what you didn't want. You said oh. that, the early goal. It would change it. Yeah, that, I mean, it did. It, it, and that's one of the few times I've ever seen this Liverpool team panic. And really get nervous, and you know you've seen them even away at Man City. They can see the nearly goal, but it didn't seem that sort of panic that we saw there in that first half and nervousness because it was one of those games that if you lose it, that didn't be remembered for a long time. We talk mm. about this Liverpool team getting remembered, but to lose a semi-final to Villarreal, having been two 0 up. That hasn't been remembered for, as I said, a long time, a real long time. Even though this Liverpool team is a great team and win lots of trophies, people have always gone back to that. You said panic. Panic is what it felt like in this studio when the second goal <laughs> went in. <laughs> Have we got it? Uh... Yeah, but Cochrane, we've talked about. I, I'm a Kapu, I don't. He's a defensive midfielder, and it's a wonderful ball with his left foot. And if you just look at Cochrane, he just jumps before Alexander Arnold at that far point. He just <laughs> times it just there gets above him, and it's a wonderful header. It really is. And you think at this point. It's game back on because Villarreal was so good in that first half. But they just couldn't keep the momentum going. Liverpool's quality really tall in that second half. Oh, I thought we were showing the panic. Sorry, I kept waiting for the panic, but I didn't see it. Um, uh, OK, so then half-time, Jurgen Klopp makes the change that you guys were both saying was, was necessary, bringing Luis Diaz on. Uh, and then we spin forward and Liverpool begin to find their foot back in this game. Everything changed. Yeah, it, it changed even before the goal. You, you felt that you were watching the real Liverpool and maybe Villarreal had run out a little bit of steam. But, I mean, the goalkeeper's been awful in the two games, to be honest. He's, he's, he's not a Champions League goalkeeper, never mind semi-final level, probably not even group stage level. You see, he's just on side in that position. I mean, to score from there is just not acceptable. It really isn't, but you could feel it was coming. It felt like it was a matter of time. Maybe wouldn't expect it to be Fabinho, really, he's a defensive midfield player, but he didn't have to ask enough questions of the goalkeeper in the first half. As soon as he did in the second half, the game was over. I think it was clever from Fabinho, though, the way he looked like he was going to cross. Took that an extra, just a moment, and the, the keeper was a little bit off balance. And when he stroked it, was a, it was a, well, it was an OK strike. The keeper should do better there. And when we were talking at half-time, you had said that Diaz would, would be what would change the game for Liverpool. Why did you think that that would be the case? Well, it was a, a, an obvious one. Obviously, you're not going to take Mane off this field, off that field, and, and uh, Salah. And I think that Jota is a very good player when the team is dominating, when, when, when you put crosses in, he can, he, he can, he can appear. But when a, a team is putting pressure on you like that, you need a guy that's good on the ball, that can dribble, running behind, Mane and Salah will give you that, but when he came on, he just changed the game. His capacity to get off player, to get to get to get in the box like like here, and what a cross from uh, Alexander Arnold, by the way. But suddenly they started to fear him. Good in one v one, he was keeping the ball well, turning well, holding it well, and obviously. Can you talk me through that movement there, Thierry, please? Well, the striker there. You can see that this guy is on a mission since, that, since he's at Liverpool. Mm -hmm. He never won anything with them yet. And he wants to prove a point every time that he's, that he's wearing that jersey. And you can see from where he's from in Colombia, you can see the desire of the desire he has to play in the, in the, in the Champions League. You can see that. It's almost, if we think, Mares de Bruyne. Yes. That's the exact same goal. But that guy, exactly what you were saying, Jamie. He came on not thinking about quadruple or losing or, oh my gosh, we might be in a situation where it, it, it can be shameful if we lose. He just wanted to help his teammates and make the difference, and he did. I mean, we, we talk about, you mentioned, Kate, why would you bring him on? It's, he's in Liverpool's best team. He should have been on from the start. Now, it may have been better the situation because maybe he would have even found it difficult in the first half. It was difficult for everyone how well Villarreal played. But he is in Liverpool's best eleven. It was a major surprise. It would be interesting whether Jurgen Klopp had, had say why he picked that team because Luis uh, Diaz didn't play at the weekend. It just felt obvious he would start the game. Yeah. But he is 
better than all the Liverpool forwards at keeping the ball and running with the ball. Mane and Salah, even in the game in the first half, they can still give the ball away because like, they're so direct. Every time they get the ball, they want to go for goal, don't they? Mm -hmm. So yep. they're not going to score every time they get the ball. So a lot of times, there's a lot of turnovers. When he's in possession, you always feel he's going to keep the ball. He's a lot better in possession than anybody else in the front five. And that's what Liverpool are really lacking in the first half. Uh, let's take a look at the next Liverpool goal then. Sadio Mane putting it out of reach. I think this is just uh, typifies Mane's game. He's managed <laughs> to, to stay on the side. You know, a lot of strikers would have just gambled and maybe gone a little bit too soon. But this is a bit is his composure. And I think, is he, is he going to cut back and, and play it to Salah there now? But coolly tucks it away with his left foot. We've talked about Ballon d'Or nominees. And if Liverpool go on and win this competition, he has to be considered. His form this season has just been frightening. And he turns up every time Liverpool need him. Not just with his goals, but the way he works for his team. He's played in a centre role where he can hold it up. He plays on the left and he even started on the right. So he's trusted by the manager and, you know, he's... he's it's paying dividend because he's just a real joy to watch. He really is. I mean, the, the thing about Mane and even Salah, and you, you just said before, you'd never bring them off at half-time. But even this, this run of games Liverpool have got, it almost feels like Jotter and Diaz are getting swapped. And they're the youngest. Mm. So Salah and Mane, in terms of attacking players, they're sort of in the late 20s. And what they've been doing for Liverpool for five or six years is unbelievable. They play every game, they're never injured, and they just deliver. The consistency is just off the scale. Let's go back to Diaz again, because I know we have a package just showing some of his best plays throughout this this game. Signing of the season, would you say, Jamie? Well, listen... One of them. Not one without a doubt. I mean, you, you could say that towards the end of the season, because I think the difference he's made to Liverpool in terms of giving them that strength off the bench. How many times have we said, even in this competition, Liverpool have won the game from the bench? We said it in Inter Milan, we said it in Benfica, we've said it now in this away game. Before he came, people were saying Liverpool didn't have a good enough squad, maybe to win the big trophies, to win the quadruple. That one signing and the actual quality of him means that somebody who was actually starting in your front three now goes on the bench. So Firmino's on the bench, Jota's on the bench. And before they were in your, in your front three, and people were still saying that was one of the best front threes in Europe. And I just think the knock-on effect of him coming in, I, I think it's just transformative of a pill That's season. your best three now, Diaz, oh, Mane, yeah. Salah, without he, doubt. He, even before that sort of you know, yeah. cameo, that, that performance in the second half, it, I think Jürgen Klopp's done something tactically. I think even Jürgen Klopp knows what his best front three is. There's a reason why he's, he's gone with that uh, tonight for whatever reason, but that's the best. He's going to have to offer see well. If you, if you want to know, he has to explain it tactically well, to see what he wanted to do. But Luis Diaz, I think for me, he, he, he's above now Diogo Jota. But I've always, always almost felt sorry for Diogo Jota. Because also, since he has arrived at Liverpool, he didn't do a lot wrong. And this is how you win big stuff. As you mentioned already, but I, I'm going to repeat it, you win trophies with your bench. Salah will do Salah, Mane will do Mane, but today they didn't appear at the beginning. Mane appeared at the end, but it, they didn't appear much at the beginning. Luis Diaz changed it, and I know it was difficult in the first half. I remember uh, how Liverpool turned the tie against Barcelona. It was Shakiri and Divock Origi on the night. And more often than not, it will be the big guns. It will be the Mane and the Salah and, and those guys. But when you need, in difficult games, when your guys, your big guys are not turning up on the night, you have a Luis Diaz. Obviously, Diogo Jota didn't happen for him tonight, but this is how you win a league, or a Champions League, or hopefully for Liverpool, a quadruple. Welcome back one more time to our studio here in London. Uh, so we got one king in the studio. There's another king who's been watching the Liverpool game, uh, LeBron James. That's what they call him, your Wally. <laughs> <laughs> you idiot. <laughs> Uh, Paris, here we come, says LeBron James. <laughs> Mike has thrown me. Uh, mood, he's enjoying himself tonight, LeBron. Watching that performance of your team, Liverpool. I was on CBS, there's only one thing for it. LeBron, if you want to come to Paris, you can join us and the CBS team and you can be my guest. I'm pitch shy and I want you next to us in Paris. Give us the support that we need to win that seventh year European Cup. Come and join us, big man. I felt very aggressive as an invite. Yeah. Was, it, was it meant to be that it's aggressive? Like, <laughs> LeBron, you're very welcome. Um, Is he watching? Of course I, he's I watching. He always watches on me. I would imagine so. Uh, Terry, you're, you're a big NBA fan, right? You came in today in your Orlando Magic jersey. You, you love to watch Jay the Will. NBA. 
Yes, I know. Yeah. But uh, LeBron, you a LeBron or a Michael Jordan guy? I grew up with Michael Jordan, so... He's not going to come now, is he? Michael, <laughs> Michael Jordan, <laughs> what do I have to say? LeBron, I'm a LeBron soul. man. No, no, I, I, can't, I would never change. I grew up with Michael Jordan, so you, you can't, you can't... For me, there's nothing above Michael Jordan. That's me. But LeBron James is just a freak. Mike he can do, he can play in any position. <laughs> Well, you know, there's nothing to say about him. He's an outstanding player. But Michael Jordan. Hey, do you want LeBron there? Jordan. I'd love LeBron there. Why not? And tell him. <laughs> You've already done it for us, LeBron. We would we would love to have you as our guest. Private jet. Ooh, CBS has no, got my no, Why not? My language. And that, that, that is really important because there's only one person on this set who gets a private jet. Hey? What? You come over from America every week on a private jet. On a private jet. <laughs> just I'm really it. Case. <laughs> no, it'd be nice though. Uh, just by first means class, of contrast class, though. First class. Business, oh, you, know. you know. Um <laughs> okay. by means of contrast, from LeBron James to another superstar, Jamie's dad. <laughs> Ooh, which one is it? I said which one is it? I don't Bring know. Him out. The one with the beard right by his mouth. Ah, uh, yeah, okay. there he is. There's Pops. Wait, so uh, okay. that was yeah, Benadorm. the game. That was Benadorm last night. So did he make it to the game? Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> That's who Gia must have bumped into. <laughs> Most likely. Uh, speaking of Gia, let's take you out to him. Uh, he's in Madrid and he's speaking to Jurgen Klopp. Congratulations. Fantastic you. feeling for you. It's the third Champions League final in five years. And what a brilliant turnaround you saw tonight. When it feels like the first in 20. <laughs> it's outstanding because, yeah, we made it obviously pretty tricky for ourselves. But um, we knew before that these kind of things can happen. It's all about in life all the time. How you re react when things don't go your way. And um, getting the first goal after, I don't know, two and a half, three minutes or whatever. That's obviously... Yeah, the opposite of what you wanted. <laughs> Momentum on their side, respect to Villarreal, I have to say, stadium, team, coach, unbelievable what they, what they set up and put us under pressure. Man we man over the whole pitch. We didn't really, we didn't play football at all. We, 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 we didn't get momentum back. I told them in the first half, I told the boys, yes, they have momentum, but they don't own it. So with one situation, we, we can get it back and we have to play in the, in the right spaces. We have to force ourselves in a game which didn't start well to to start playing football, actually. And all of a sudden, when we broke the lines, when we found Nabi, when we found whatever, trend and a half spaces, and when it's one three, we're more flexible, not fixed on our position. All of a sudden, we were in the game, scored goals, <laughs> and made it happen. Yeah, so when you're two down, and you're heading into half-time, that's a big half-time talk, isn't it? Did you, what did you rearrange? Yeah, and the problem is with the half-time, with the half-time is that we knew what, what was wrong, because it was so obvious. But we didn't have a situation to show where we did, did it right. So it was like, okay, I told Pete Kravitz when he went in, find one where we do, where we do well and we can show it. And we come in and he said, uh, don't have it. So that, it's, it's, yeah, there are a few things. Of course, it's a big, big half-time. Um, but it's more important how the boys react. So it was clear that we have to play football. We were calm because we, we, I accept it 100%. If Villarreal plays the second half like they played the first and we play the second half like the first, then they will be in the final. The, the perception was like this. Everything looked more that they will score the 3-0 than we will score the 2-1. But we are still here, so I think we could give it a try. <laughs> yeah, and that's what we did. And, and Diaz had a big impact when he came in, didn't he? Yeah, but it was not about Diogo in the first half. We were just, we were just not flexible enough. Mo and Sadio were fixed in their positions and Diogo kind of in a, in a space, but didn't, we didn't find him there. So that's why we had to mix it through. Um, yes, and then obviously Lewis, what a player he is, yeah, but it's um, not about who came on, it was how we started them playing. And the, and the pace was different in the second half. Did you ease off the press? I mean, that's what Ria Ferdinand was asking. Sorry, did, sorry? Did you ease off on the pressing in the yeah, second yeah, half? Yeah. No, not ease off, but we had to change it. But what we did was just that, that Diogo just went for whoever, and we, we were not ready. The rest was kind of because they man mark. It's a typical sy symptom that they man mark, we start man marking. And all of a sudden, they just pass the ball, pass Diogo, and from there, Parejo could play on. Then that doesn't make sense. So we, yeah, we kept him slightly deeper and went from there. More compact. We had to be more compact, closing the half spaces and going from there. And it worked brilliantly. So tomorrow night, you, uh, do you get a cold yes, beer? Yes, I will watch it. You, cold beer, feet up, relaxed. Yeah, of course, because it's, it's anyway, the, the, whoever it will be, it will be massive. And so, and <laughs> as now, not that, uh, that I would wish for one or the other, so it will be massive. Um, and whoever wins tomorrow night or gets the result, um, 
will deserve it, and then we face each other in Paris. Superb. Thank you. Congratulations to that man, his fourth Champions League final. One with Dortmund, now three with Liverpool, the joint most of any manager in Champions League history, along with Ferguson, Ancelotti and Lippi. This lot loved it. Game sounded very pretty just now, didn't he? Sorry, <laughs> Jules. <laughs> My bad. Um, Did yeah, you have a drink after all? Excuse me, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. Uh, <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Jurgen Klopp, it just been transformative for Liverpool Football Club, Jamie. Good news that he signed a contracts extension. Uh, how much do you enjoy seeing him in the way he, he runs this club? Well, for the last sort of few months, there's almost been a panic around Liverpool. The fact that Jürgen Klopp hadn't signed a new contract and he still had two years to go. I was still, and a lot of Liverpool fans were thinking, what's going to happen when he goes? And he still had two years of him. So the fact that he signed a new contract, I, I was always confident he would. I, I do believe that because I'm not sure there's any other club, I wouldn't say like Liverpool, there's lots of great clubs, but that suits Jürgen Klopp. I think he suits... Liverpool are not an underdog by any means. They're one of the biggest clubs out there. But that thing of when he was at Dortmund fighting against Bayern, when we had more funds, and the same it sort of with Manchester United and maybe Man City in the Premier League. I couldn't see him managing a Real Madrid or a Barcelona. I don't think it would suit his style of, mm. of management. I think he, he needs the, the intensity of the crowd and, you know, just that togetherness. And he is, he is already, and in four years' time, who knows what Liverpool will win that time. He is going to be remembered as one of the greatest managers in Liverpool's history and one of the greatest figures in Liverpool's history, right up there with you know the great managers. What Shankly did at the start. Now, Liverpool have had a barren spell, obviously went 30 years without a title. If Liverpool could then continue the success after Jürgen Klopp left, you know, competing at this level, he would be seen as that Shankly figure who almost started it and then it was carried on by, by one of the managers. That's how pivotal his, his sign for Liverpool has been. He says he doesn't prefer one team or the other, Real Madrid or Manchester City in the final. I think he's lying. Which team do you think he would prefer? He pretty, I, I'm, I'm pretty certain he'd prefer Real Madrid. Do you agree, Thierry? To be fair, only he can answer that. Um, but if I were He's him, not here, though. No, <laughs> I know, but in that speculation, you don't know what he wants. So, uh, for me, it doesn't matter. If you're Liverpool, you adapt to any situation, whether it's Madrid or whether it's Manchester City. You're watching the game and you see what you can do against what team in order of who goes in the final. And that's, that's about it. It's, a, it's not about are you fearing this or fearing that. Whoever's going to come, adapt to it and try to win the game. The only thing is, though, sorry, Jamie, Real Madrid are good on the counter-attack. You've seen it in the, in the, the games, in the group stages, the later rounds of the competition. Right? Real Madrid have looked like they're down and out, and then next minute, the score. So, I think both teams are equally as good. Man City, probably, just edge it for me. You don't want to play against Man City. Again, but either or, it's much of a muchness, isn't it? There you go. <laughs> Why you don't text the man back? I actually don't have his number anymore. So, text me, uh, I'll go through someone else to get his number. Well, it's hard to get in touch anymore. with you, isn't no, it? No, 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 not at all. I changed my number at the same time and when I put it, put all my numbers on my new phone, his, his number wasn't I mean, there I mean, to, to be fair, Tonight there's been a little bit of a lack of respect from Thierry. I mean, to Virgil van Dijk, CBS not wearing a tie. I mean, it's like a little bit of a theme. I mean, he, I mean, this is a he's a top guy. He's showing you that respect, and you, you're not getting back on touch. He didn't take the right number. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll, 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 I'll get him. You're actually upset because he's texting me. Yeah, I know. <laughs> oh, no, 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 it's, it's all right. I thought he said need the legend. Is that, is that you or me? <laughs> <laughs> I knew it wasn't you. <laughs>